Welcome back to the Ninth Hour. I'm Michael and I'm joined by Melanie. Hello. And we're from Ninth CX. This podcast is brought to you by Card Academy. Please check them out for all your needs for Y Schwartz singles and supplies. So today we're going to be tackling a topic that we've been kind of thinking about for a while. It's been on a lot of players' minds for probably as long as the game has existed. And uh, we've kind of given it uh, an easy to remember name called the Waifu Effect. Now this uh, thing or this phenomenon of the Waifu Effect is not necessarily limited to Y Schwartz. Uh, because the idea of having a bias that's tied to our sentiment and affinity and our irrational, you know, love or hate for various characters is not limited to uh, just Y. Schwartz or even just anime. You know, it appears all over. But for the purposes of our discussion, we're going to be calling it the waifu effect because, you know, it's easier to remember that way. So to get things kicked off about what it actually is, uh, we postulate that we have an emotional attachment to experiences that we've had with various characters, right? We watch them from afar, we identify with them, we feel close with the character, and we might feel drawn closer to them. And on the opposite end, right, we might also see characters that we absolutely hate, that we want to have nothing to do with, and make it a point to openly uh, dislike and uh, go as far as hate. So how does this affect us? in terms of the game, uh, the, this effect can, can cause us to make decisions that are more subjective than objective. And in the card game context, that could mean that we say we stick with a deck that we know has won before, so we refuse to change it, or it has all of our favorite character, or it is a really bad deck with the character that we dislike the most, just to you know be able to lose with it on principle, to send a message, I guess. But uh, one thing that we want to clear up first off, as well as this is not uh, supposed to be coming from a purely uh, competitive player's standpoint, because um, you know we've seen the kind of back and forth that can go between uh, what happens when you have a player that wants to play strictly to play with their favorite character versus one who wants to play to really you know min max everything and to optimize it. Now, this is not, we don't take the position of the competitive player or the perhaps less competitive player in this sense. We only want to come in as an observer because clearly uh, we are not going to end that kind of discussion, but we do want to kind of find that middle ground to show here's what really happens when this uh, effect takes place and how it might affect our choices. But at the end of the day, we also want it to be very clear that we respect both players' positions. So if you're a super competitive player, wonderful, you know, please don't change. And if you are a casual player who only wants to play with your favorite characters, wonderful, please don't change. You know, this is not going to be um, a cast that by any means tells you you should play one way or the other because that doesn't get us anywhere. In fact, people would probably, uh, you know, close the, uh, close the cast if they were listening to that kind of thing because it's... It's not really something that we want to listen to. So, moving ahead on that, there are some questions that you know I'm sure that we would want to address because uh, there seems to be a, a little bit of lack of understanding between the two camps of thought. So uh, that's why we've brought on Melanie here to kind of go into those questions and we'll be going back and forth with that. So, uh, Melanie, just for uh, you know kicking us off here, why do you personally build waifu decks? Um, well, here are some of my thoughts to that question. Um, firstly, um, to go back to something that Michael already brought up, is that not everybody wants to play competitively. Um, I enjoy it. I know many people who do enjoy it. I even know many people who find a good balance between it. But not every person who enters the game of Y Shorts comes into it with that mindset. They just want to play with their favorite anime and their favorite characters, and that's where they get find the enjoyment. Um, sometimes they see a build that revolves around a character. Sometimes it may even revolve around a combo or what we might negatively term as a gimmick um, that they either see and like, uh, see that fits their play style, or see that like fits just like um, something in the anime that they enjoyed. Um, and players. They tend to gravitate what's comfortable um, to them. They tend to gravitate to that. And sometimes budget 
plays a factor. I mean, if you're built, if you love to love Rue Darkness, and that was your favorite anime, and you maybe you liked Yami, but she wasn't your favorite character. Well, you might be turned off of building a Yami waifu or a meta wife, uh, meta Yami deck just because of the price tag attached to it, and that's not something you can afford. Whereas, um, if you're a really big fan of Yui. Um, her cards are a little less expensive in some cases, not all, and that might be something that fits budget range. Um, basically, though, what it should be noted, though, that uh, from a competitive player standpoint, that just because it's a waifu deck doesn't mean you should underestimate it, because some waifu decks actually are very competitive, and the characters get benefits for you having all of the same name character on the field. Uh, Love Live has that. Um, some of the new Cinderella Girls cards that have been spoiled have a, sort of a trio unit bonus. Um, and when we build decks around those, they can get pretty powerful and be easily underestimated. Um, I will also note that as a player that plays competitively, sometimes you have to find a chance to take a break. And sometimes that break is to just, you know, break out a waifu deck. Um, I just built, um, I've been working a lot with Monogatari and I'm new to the set, so I built a Tsubasa Hanakawa waifu deck recently and I just decided to pull it out of my locals at our competitive event uh, because I wanted a break. I didn't want to play a really competitive deck that weekend. And uh, you know, it's not the strongest deck in the world, it doesn't take advantage of all the new very um, powerful pieces the set got. But it does some fun things, and it still went to one out of three rounds, and it was just a nice, you know, break from that. Finally, remember the card pool thing. Um, a lot of sets, especially recently, have grown exponentially in their card pool. And uh, if you're a new player entering the game, that can be a little overwhelming. If you decide to get into Little Busters, and I'll remember when I entered this project uh, over a year and a half ago, you know, it, it's a scary thing to enter because I'm sitting here looking at card lists for six plus boosters and three TDs of cards and trying to kind of make sense of that. And waifu builds and building a deck around a favorite character can be a way to limit the card pool by just a name or a favorite character and get a chance to look at the the set from the perspective of um, you know just a smaller portion of cards kind of take that in build with it play with it see what you like see what you don't like and then move on to another character um, Little Busters I've done this with Love Live I've done this with the card pool is so big at this point that if you didn't kind of grow into the game with those sets being released one after another that sometimes waifu building isn't necessarily a bad way to learn a card pool. Um, and, and also have fun with maybe a very, very character or two from the series. Right, and so that's, I mean, in the sense that the using the waifu, I guess, method of breaking down a set can actually be a helpful thing. It shows, it should go to show that uh, there really isn't that strong of a case for saying that only waifu builds are a waste of time because uh, the why Schwartz says the game itself is such a large game because there are so many moving pieces. You know there are uh, thousands of unique cards in it, and to learn all of those is going to be a very difficult task. I mean, if you look at comparable card games, right? It'll be it takes a very long time to know absolutely how far every card and every given set can go, and so on. And uh, quite frankly, we're probably never going to be able to get at least one player who has the game uh, by you know textbook definition mastered because it's so uh, hard to you know both uh, address the deck building portion of the game as also the uh, the mechanics of in game at the same time, right? It's because it's a two part game, uh, you know, working with a kind of uh, limited scope can be helpful in the long run. And if that so happens to be uh, working with a uh, working with a waifu deck or working with only a certain color and so on, these are all legitimate methods to the bigger picture. And we should also say that no player should make another player feel bad because that is how they approach the game. And this is a source of, this can be at least a source of frustration among the hyper-competitive players 
uh, because something that I found, at least in my experience, is that those who already are at the very high level will often find themselves frustrated by the um, how far ahead they are versus how um, behind other players might be. And uh, it can come off as being, well, very confrontational. And this is something, this is something again, not limited to this game. It happens in just about every card game you can imagine, where there's a kind of a high elo club of people who already understand the game at a certain level. And uh, they, they, I mean, this doesn't necessarily happen all the time, but what could happen to a new player, uh, especially if uh, they might come off as uh, arrogant, right? That they go with this idea and they're at a completely different phase of learning the game. And so, you know, dealing with that kind of mismatch and being able to uh, work with that is also something that would be important for uh, newer players to realize. I mean, and again, not limited just to WS, that no matter the game, you will probably run into somebody who uh, takes the game and themselves at such a level that they might be very good, but they won't be really best positioned to help you in that sense. So, you know, for those of us who might say that um, the waifu decks are a waste of time, I would say congratulations for being that far along, but don't push around the other players with that because, you know, that kind of mentality, and I've seen this happen in other games too, where um, players will be kind of nasty to each other, and the I guess the most satisfying part about that is I've never seen any of them actually do very well in the long term. You know, it's it's kind of this. Um, I don't know whether we could call it uh, good comeuppance or karma or whatnot, but uh, it's just in my experience keeping that kind of mentality where you don't welcome ideas of others just does not uh, help anybody because. I mean, it's, I mean, it's applied to academia, right? If you if you refuse yeah. to learn uh, yourself, then how are how are you supposed to keep learning? If you think you have something mastered, then you know your your arrogance will probably blind you from everything. So that leads us into our next point, though, that one of the um, uh, one of the there's a statement that I've heard actually multiple times about this game. There's um, the observation that has uh, been around. And that is, this game seems to be just all waifu decks and uh, players saying that my waifu was better than your waifu. And Melanie, I know you had some thoughts on this. So what what would you say to this? Because I know I have my thoughts. Yeah, I, I sometimes <laughs> hear this quite a bit locally. And I'll be honest, um, I, I either see it um, and hear it locally, or I've even heard it online in different discussion boards. Um, so my thoughts on this kind of fall into sort of two categories here. In the first, I get somewhat bothered by this, um, and I feel that a lot of the times this statement doesn't always get um, said by people that are actually in the game. I feel like this is kind of just people who have had a brief observation of Weiss from the outside. Um, maybe they're uh, card game players from another game, maybe they are new to Weiss, um, but they are basically just picking up on a small snippet of interactions between wise players at just the an inopportune time. I'm I, if I use my locals as an example, we do tend to um, make a bunch of jokes and go back and forth about favorite characters featured in our decks. Uh, to other card players observing or new players, it probably does seem like the only thing we discuss is waifu related, especially as some of the jokes fly. But I think this is more because uh, it's, you know, fun and conversational banner within the group. And it's not really that we only have waifu decks. That couldn't be further from the truth. Um, but we do like to balance how we play locally. And, you know, people like to pull out their waifu decks and just have a lot of fun with it and enjoy it. Um, so it's kind of just... You gotta be careful because just because people are talking about, oh, well, my waifu is better than your waifu, well, let's battle this out kind of thing, doesn't necessarily mean that that's all those players do. And um, on the on the flip side, there's actually one point that I want to put in here is that uh, we also have to consider that why Schwartz players aren't necessarily going to be ambassadors for the brand. 
right? Yeah. For instance, if we look at if we look at magic, right? Judges uh, for the game are expected to be uh, to to operate on a certain level uh, professionalism. I can say this as uh, you know one myself who's been there. Than that, there's a kind of uh, standard for how one operates, how one uh, presents themselves to others, and so on, to present the game in the best light possible. Why Schwartz, not having that kind of structure in itself, there is no such onus for any player to uh, be an ambassador. Not necessarily because it's not expected of them, but it's probably just because of the culture and how there is kind of a, a void there that we don't, uh, or at least the the parent company will not um, impose upon players this idea that their actions, at least within the game, should be uh, conducive to the uh, company's image, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I mean, it's one thing that we can agree that it is really not all uh, players going back and forth, but we should also observe that and nod to the other side that says, you know, to be fair, it's not like these players are expected to talk a certain way either. And uh, so, I mean, if you're if you're one of those players that's listening to this, by all means, if you want to argue about waifus and that's how you, you know, want to go about playing the game, great. I mean, that's we're not trying to say that players should go one way or the other, but an observation that I've made is that you know, as much as we might want, right, to have a culture of players that would be, you know, more positive about that, that don't be as confrontational, because I mean, I'm playfully confrontational about. Uh, about wife who's being better or you know better or not but uh, i've seen some uh, smack talk go a little far and you know that's not me but again that that comes down to personal discretion so i mean i would say that um you know it's it's something that others can observe and probably will continue to observe but uh it's also probably something that we can't expect to change even uh or it's certainly not overnight but even in the long run so, Melanie, uh, you, were, yes. you were saying. So, I would also kind of piggyback on that with um, a second point here, is that I, I kind of want you to think about if you've ever played another card game, like maybe if you've um, played like Magic the Gathering, um, and just think back to maybe that one time that you build a deck uh, just because you liked a few of, what a few of the cards did. Maybe you knew that you know it wasn't the most powerful deck and it really wasn't going to do anything at Friday Night Magic, but you loved that Planeswalker or you really liked that mythological creature. Um, and maybe you loved the lore of vampires and you just wanted to build a deck because it was viable and standard at the time and did that. Maybe it featured a combo that you really enjoyed and you just were like, great, I'm going to troll everybody with this or I'm just going to do this because it looks like fun. Um, this is, for the most wife players, what it means to build a wife dude deck. And I don't say that to say that it's only that. Trust me. There are lots of people reasons why people uh, seek to build waifu decks or maybe avoid building them. Right. And I can say but uh, inside sometimes, magic that um, happens too. We, yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen yeah, with just it, pet cards. But sometimes it can be pet strategies. Like I know a player who can't get away from building combo decks. You know, he, he literally cannot uh, ignore a format where there's some sort of really obscure combo and he'll try to find it and build it. Like, that's just his kind of thing. Has he been successful in the long run? No, I mean, up and down. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's it's not limited at all. I mean, it can, it can take on different faces for sure. Yeah, and... I think the one thing that I always remember about Weiss, when I was first introduced to the game, if you read some of the promotional material, it's supposed to be you reenacting your favorite anime series on stage. And, you know, we've kind of, the, some sense have kind of gotten away from this. Um, this is a discussion maybe for another time, but, um, it, you know, sets tend to be very flavorful and put around their anime with um, sometimes with effects and things that kind of focus on the anime. Um, for example, early Love Live, the girls changed from their regular school outfits into their um, dance number outfits. And the series somewhat gravitated away from that for many reasons, including meta demands and, and what was popular at the time for players. But sometimes when we build decks, we want to kind of reenact those favorite moments in our anime. And 
that's sometimes where waifu decks come into play because they revolve around a character's gimmick. Um, if I go back to Tsubasa Hanakawa, she doesn't know everything, she only knows what she knows. And one of the things, abilities that they gave her cards in the new set was the ability to scry the top card of your deck and make a decision about it, either to leave it on top or put it on the bottom. And it kind of gives you this just a uh, little bit of knowledge power, like you either know what's on top or you put it on the bottom and you know what's on the bottom. And, and um, you get abilities based off of that. So sometimes it's a lot of fun to build a deck that kind of revolves around something that was important to you about the anime or about a character. Right. So some some people might ask then, is it possible to get, you know, uh, overly obsessed? You know, does it ever go too far? And I want to touch on this one first because yeah. I think that uh, it depends on what you mean by it going too far. Um, you know, I, I can... There are certainly parts of the uh, culture, at least the you know anime loving culture, that would probably make some people uh, who are not a part of that uh, subculture very uncomfortable, uh, such as uh, visiting various shrines. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing that uh, you know to have, uh, I guess, um, what would what would it be called armor where one uh, creates uh, a completely decked out outfit filled with you know, pins, keychains, charms, and whatnot. And another thing to uh, perhaps in the same line build a shrine in one's you know, home, in one's uh, workspace, and so on, or one's car. Uh, I've seen all of those. And um, you know, as, as somebody who admittedly is a part of that, I mean, uh, we can try to play it off as you know coolly as we want, but at the end of the day, we're fans. We know it. We love it. There's no there's you know, like there's no shame in in that. Is if it ever goes too far, um, you know I think that's really up to our discretion as to if it goes too far. Like certainly if it leads us to irresponsible behavior, um, I mean we can consider that too far. But I have yet to hear of uh, an anime fan who went uh, too far in their fandom because, I mean, this kind of thing happens all the time. One of the uh, most common comparisons I see is the decked out sports room, right? It's like, why is this okay, but this, is, but this isn't, right? I mean, obsession yeah. is, will be what it will be, right? And how we choose to uh, show it to others is really at our discretion. Um, Granted, because of the current market presence, I guess you could say, it does skew toward a different demographic. But I mean, uh, I guess Melanie and I, you and I can kind of claim somewhat outsider or outlier, not outsider, but outlier status with that. Um, yeah, I think so. We're old. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what um, do you think? I think, I think one thing that I do want to point out here, and I've kind of experienced this over the years, um, is that the anime community is a very highly devoted and dedicated crowd. Um, I kind of like to put it this way in that we are not fair weather fans um, as both people who watch and enjoy anime and I think also as white shorts players who kind of embrace that into their card game playing time. I, I think we tend to be very loyal and commit highly to something we care about. Um, we rarely just jump into something lightly, and we're probably a little bit more uh, commonly uh, to defend it. And I think that's probably where the whole waifu effect thing comes out the most. And you can't take anything too far. That's just, you know, that's just going to happen. That's, that's life. Um, some people will take things to an extreme that they probably shouldn't. Some people may not take things far enough in some ways. And that's kind of just something that I think each player has to find a balance with. I personally have seen it go both ways. Um, and I'm guilty myself. I mean, I have some favorite characters that I really identify with. And I have some favorite decks that, you know what, I probably will not, like Michael said at the beginning of this, this cast, pull apart because they are focused around a favorite character. 
However, I try to find a balance, and I think that's what all players have to kind of find, is they have to either, if they're very competitive and are never going to approach the game from that viewpoint, they have to find a way to come to peace with the fact that for some players, that's their thing, and that's what they enjoy, and that's what they that's what brought them into the game and that's what's going to keep them Mm -hmm. and i think also as a non-competitive player you have to respect when others don't want to always build a waifu deck or play that way they want to make the most out of their card pools they want the depth of mixing together various characters right so with that said i mean we should also uh, i also want to tag on one thing uh i don't think that anybody should ever feel um, ashamed of not going far enough or even going too far because um, that doesn't help anybody. You know, I, I think that uh, we as players can afford to be civil at all times, you know, knowing this. And I mean, again, that's why we really wanted to bring this to the front to say there are really a couple of camps here, major major camps. I mean, we can we, if we wanted to refine it further, we probably could, but I don't think it's really... Uh, worth anybody's time to try to break that down because ultimately most of us fall somewhere in that pleasant middle where you know we have fun right on the on the super um extremes of the spectrum of play is a great deal of dissatisfaction but for like the 98 percent that's in the middle even if you are skewing heavily toward one or the other uh, there's going to be fun to be found right you're going to have fun with the game and uh so if you find yourself right going way too heavily on competitive or obsessively insisting that uh, this waifu is best or this character is trash and you know so on, uh, you might want to you know just take a take a second, get some perspective, you know, just breathe and remember <laughs> this is a game that we're all in together, right? Better or worse, we're all here to celebrate really this um, the joy of the anime. And how we choose to express that really is up to uh, you know, each individual player, uh, him or herself. And um, so with that, we'll be wrapping up this cast. Um, once again, please check out our sponsor, Card Academy, everything. And uh, we will see you next time. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. All right.